Should we create irresistible offers? Reminds me of the Godfather who said, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Is that something we want to do in our business, in our marketing? Make them an offer that they can't refuse? Well, if you study from the mainstream marketing experts and copywriters, they say, well, of course, you want to make your offer so compelling, compelling that they don't have any willpower other than to go ahead and buy your product or your service. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Don't you want more clients? Why wouldn't you do everything you can to make, to make it the best chance for you to get more clients? Why not? What's wrong with that? Well, I have been in this marketing world for 13 years full-time as a uh, marketing consultant. And I'll tell you, I have you know, obviously done all of what I'm gonna about to share with you. Um, and in fact, uh, maybe the best way for me to share this with you is to share a couple of actual phrases um, that are being used, uh, or rather I'm gonna share uh, what other marketing experts are trying to sell to you. Now, what I'm gonna share with you, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna use any names, uh, and you don't need to go look looking for who wrote this stuff because the reality, the sad reality is that it's being done widely in my industry. So let me know if any of these are things you've seen before. Don't name any names. We don't need to demonize any particular, you know, expert or business, but do let me know if you've seen something like this and what is your response to it. So let me go ahead and share my screen right now. So this, these lines actually came from a sales page from some colleagues that I respect uh, and, and admire, except that just like many people who have good hearts, uh, they've been trained to do things that um, they might not have reflected upon deeply enough to realize, ah, this is being manipulative. So uh, this, their sales page uh, is trying to sell you on a program to help with your marketing. And, and they wrote, you'll learn secrets for sharing what you do that produce instant trust and desire in your ideal clients. You'll learn how to share your story so that people lean in and get an intuitive hit that they need to work with you. You'll learn how to create your unique aligned and irresistible marketing statement, You know, making an irresistible offer. So let me break this down a bit so that you can become more conscious of what's happening here. So first of all, they said you'll learn secrets for, you know, blah, 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 blah. Now, when someone says you're going to learn secrets, it means that if you don't learn these secrets, you're going to be on the outside. Whereas the people who know the secrets have some kind of insider advantage. And wouldn't you want the insider advantage? Now, that sounds really reasonable to, to say that, but notice that, well, I, I try never to use the word secrets in my, in my sales copy. Uh, if I do use the word secrets, it's usually I'm writing a blog post and I say, here's the secret I've learned, blah, blah, and I tell it to you right away. But not like, here's a secret and you got to pay me for the secret because I don't want people to feel like, okay, uh, I'm an outsider. And I have to pay this person to uh, have some kind of access to information that gives, gives, gives me an, an advantage over others. And, you know, if I don't get this information, I'm missing out. And I am, you know, going to be, you know, I, I'm always going to be worried that I'm missing out on, the, I didn't buy that secret or, or whatever. And you might say, well, George, that's every product, <laughs> every service, every book, every, every course uh, does this. And I, and I say, I, that's true. And this is what I'm trying to do less of. Um, because the reality is this. If you are patient enough to research the web, there is no secret. Truthfully. You know, you, know, you could say when you're selling something, you could say, listen, I'm going to save you a lot of time by putting together what I've spent lots of time researching. But a secret, hidden knowledge, these are manipulative tactics that 
um, well, if you check in deeply <laughs> with your with your heart, you may or may not agree. But let, let me let me move on. Okay. Uh, you're, you'll learn secrets for sharing what you do that produce instant trust and desire in your ideal clients. Do you like to produce instant trust and desire in others so that they'll, you know, I don't know, salivate and buy whatever it is that you're selling? Instant trust and desire is the language of a manipulator, right? Because what is, what is trust, first of all? Should you, can you produce instant trust in someone on command by demand, uh, you know, and, and and here's the thing: I think trust obviously is incredibly important for a healthy relationship, and trust is important for client-provider connection, so that there can be deep work that can be done. Because without trust, then there can't be. Uh, the, the the client is, isn't going to really listen to you or take your take on your advice or your ex transformational experience, etc. So trust is important, but shouldn't trust be earned over time by repeated trustworthy interactions? I mean, if someone off the street came to you and had some technique to produce instant trust. Would you trust that person if you knew that they were trying to use a technique to produce instant trust in you? Now, there's a difference with, oh, I've heard of this person and people that I know that I trust speak really well of that person. And then now this is the first time I'm interacting with that person. I've already heard about them. There's already a baseline of potential trust. And now, okay, trust is built because it's confirming what I've heard from people I've already trusted. That's different. But what typical marketing, uh, conventional marketing and sales is trying to teach you is to produce instant trust in an online visitor or, you know, yeah, typically it's an online type of thing. Tip produce instant trust in someone, whether or not they've ever heard of you before. And I think that's dangerous because, well, it's the, it's the techniques of sociopaths, psychopaths, um, narcissists, perhaps. Uh, instant trust and desire from your ideal clients. It's like the Pavlov dogs, right? It's like you ring the bell and then they salivate. And that's what sort of conventional markers are trying to teach you to, to learn how to, um, you know, move people around like, 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 like they're puppets, puppetry, right? Well, this is what, what dictators do. Right. This is what manipulators do. Uh, this is what shady people do. So that's as you can obviously check in with your heart and realize mm, probably not the kind of a person I want to be and not the kind of relationship I want. I mean, because if I if I could consciously say, I don't you know, you don't know me, but I'm going to instantly produce trust in you. And that worked. I actually am a little afraid of what that relationship could become because if that person is going to is going to like listen to every you know everything i say and do everything i say without having built a baseline which takes time of trust then it might be too manipulative of a relationship to be healthy you see what i mean okay so let me let me keep going so the conventional marker also marketer also wants to teach you to share your story so that your ideal clients lean in and get an intuitive hit they need to work with you. Mm, I believe so intuitive hit, intuitive hit, intuition. Um, intuitive hit sounds to me like it comes from like a higher spiritual source, intuitive hit, right? Like, oh, I got an intuitive hit that I I shouldn't get on that plane. And then, you know, the plane has an accident or something, or, you know, or I, I got an intuitive hit that I should call someone and you call someone and they, they, they really need help right now. And you were able to provide a, a, a service com of compassion that, you know, really benefits their life. Look at that, those intuitive hits, right. Or you're creating something and you get an intuitive hit that you should go in this direction versus that direction. I believe in intuitive hits. And I believe that if you want to say they come from a higher source or they come from your 
ex, your lifetime of experience and that comes that arises out of you. But to have a marketer or a business person or a service provider purposely write something or do something that is meant to pr produce an intuitive hit in somebody, to me, that's manipulation right there because they're it's like it's like corrupting spirituality. It's a this idea of intuitive anyway. So <laughs> as you can see, I have complaints about that. And finally, let's talk about creating irresistible offers because that's what you know these conventional marketers are are teaching you to do. I don't want, like I said, to to be your puppet master. You know, if I say buy this, you better buy it. That is what the, the that's a fantasy of the conventional marketer is to be able to do that and therefore make as much money as they want on demand. Just I, I sell something and then I, the way that I like to approach that, I'll tell you this. I mean, because yes, I do, I, I do teach you, uh, as you probably know, as you watch my videos, I do teach you to build a true fan audience who then buy just about everything you sell. So George, what's the difference then? Here's the difference. How I teach you to build a true fan audience is not to have such scintillating, compelling copy writing or video that a stranger who doesn't know you go, oh my God, I got to buy this thing because it's so amazing. It must be, it's, it's going to change my life, save my life. It's going to do everything for me. No, I teach you to build a fan base that buys just about everything you sell with a relationship, a long-term uh, connection where you have shown yourself to be trustworthy again and again and again and again and again, reliably over time. Guess what happens when you do that? One is that you actually change yourself. I mean, the, my, I'll tell you what my secret is, okay? my The secret of what I'm trying to do if I have a hidden agenda, it's this. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you my hidden agenda so it's no longer hidden. My hidden agenda is to teach you a type of marketing whereby when you do it, you actually grow yourself spiritually and you grow your character. You grow your ability to, to be self-disciplined joyfully. So not to harm yourself in self-discipline or to authoritarian yourself, you know, be an authoritarian to yourself. But I'm teaching you the type of marketing and business. My secret agenda is by doing the kind of marketing that I'm talking about, you become a person that you deeply trust because you show yourself up, you, you show up reliably day by day, week by week, month by month. Not the people who like sometimes post content and then they go months without posting content because they weren't inspired or um, they weren't self-disciplined enough to keep boundaries with their family members or with, with their job or whatever it is. The, the, the secret to success really in my book is self-discipline, but not the kind of self-discipline where we judge and blame and, and criticize ourselves, but rather the kind of self-discipline that arises out of love for ourselves and gentleness with our path. And the self-discipline is something that happens over quite a long period of time. It's not that today you're not disciplined, tomorrow you're suddenly disciplined and you're posting every day. That you, There's stamina. There's such a thing as stamina that if you do that, you'll get burned out within a few weeks. But if you build yourself up gradually, you'll build up the stamina to say, I can post every day, I can create every day and still have plenty of energy left to do everything else that I want to do in my life. And I'm so organized and I'm so good at keeping boundaries with other people and with myself you know, my own desires. And I'm so good at keeping boundaries, healthy boundaries with others and with myself that I'm able to create on demand, to not fear creating, to not fear rejection, to not fear judgment, either from others or from myself. I no longer fear that kind of judgment. That's, that's my hidden motive. I, I'm, I'm secretly trying to help you become that kind of person, but I'm just using marketing as a, as a way of getting there. Because in marketing, you know, as you learn from the way I do marketing, it's about becoming a consistent, authentic creator of content and of offerings. And so that you show up to your audience week after week, month after month, consistently without fail, unless you're taking a conscious sabbatical and you tell your audience that, 
which I do as well, right? I take, you know, 12 weeks of sabbatical a, a year, meaning I don't do content for 12 weeks, about, about 12 weeks of the year. And I tell my audience whenever I do that. Um, so <laughs> that's my hidden agenda. That's my secret motive, ulterior motive, uh, as I'm doing all this stuff for you. I want all of us to become joyfully self-disciplined people, gently so, that are able to then create so much authentic value in the world that our audiences can't help, can't help, irresistible. Yeah, it can't help, but trust us because we've shown ourselves to be trustworthy over time. And because we care consistently for our audience, we learn enough about what they want and need to shape our offerings in a way that really meets their wants and needs. And so when we do our marketing, we don't have to be irresistible. We don't have to be clever with our copy and to be persuasive with our messages. No, because we build an audience of true fans, what we do is simply whisper. There's no manipulation. There's no uh, trying to drive home the pain point and trying to make things like, oh my God, I, if I don't buy this thing, I'm going to have a harder life or I'm not going to, I'm going to miss out on this amazing secret that I have to pay for. No. People will want to buy from you. Your true fans want to buy from you for two reasons. One is they have trusted you over months or years. And they say, of course, you, you produce something that is designed to meet my wants and needs. It sounds like it. And you're, you're explaining it very simply and very plainly. I mean, look at my sales pages. They're not, they don't have the kind of copy that you typically see in conventional uh, marketer sales pages. And yet I sell plenty of courses. Um, and uh, I don't, you know, anyway, so so I was going to say two, 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 two reasons why they buy from you. One is because of long-term trust. Okay, three reasons, sorry. Long-term trust, number two, is that you have cared enough about them to shape your offering so that it aligns with their wants and needs. And number three, they buy from you because they want to be within your community of true fans. Uh, I'm assuming that your offering creates some kind of a community even if you're doing one-to-one -one services, one-to-one -one clients, I hope that at some point you'll think about creating some connection between your clients who want to. I mean, obviously it's always optional, but for your clients who want to connect with each other so that they can learn from each other, encourage each other, you're, that's the third reason why your true fans will buy from you is to be in community with others like them and who are also on this path of growth together. So. We don't need irresistible offers because the, the idea of an irresistible offer that you consciously create is, like I said, very manipulative. Now, we can, as a child, right, um, reach, reach the kingdom of heaven as a, as, as a child, right? Uh, that famous line. And here in marketing, it's like I want us to become childlike as well, not childish but childlike. Now, let's talk about this a bit because children are very persuasive. <laughs> the children we love, <laughs> right, are very persuasive to us. I mean, it's like everything they do is cute and adorable to us. And, um, you know, we, we want to do everything for, for, you know, for, uh, for the children we love. And so they're very persuasive, but hopefully they're not persuading in a manipulative way, right? That's not childlike anymore. That's that becomes a manipulative adult, right? Not all adults have to be like that. I'm asking us to consider becoming childlike again, where we are we are persuasive, but not because we're trying to be, but because we are genuinely expressing <clears throat> our joy and our care and our love and our connection with the person that we're playing with. Like I said, childlike. We're playing. We're playing with the others in our sphere. Uh, as you know, like uh, soul to soul, you know, childlike soul, childlike soul, let's say. And we're not trying to manipulate, but we're extremely persuasive because we're coming out of an authentic love, an authentic expression of spirit, if you might call it, or uh, 
a genuine self, you might say. So I hope that this is helpful as a way to understand how we cannot have to use the pain point and the, and the manipulative type of marketing and still have plenty of clients. Now, it doesn't matter what you sell. It doesn't matter if you sell a totally soft skill, soft, nothing technical at all. If you have, if you, if you show up consistently to create authentic value, which is again, my secret agenda, like I said, is to really to grow yourself. You become the kind of person with practice that creates authentic value again and again and again and again. You become a different person. Your audience senses that energy because you are sending out a different, if I might say, vibration or energy. But it's really your character is displaying itself, you know, all the time whenever you show up online, and the consistency with which you show up online, uh, and the energy that you display in your words and in your, you know, speech and and, and everything you choose to do. When you become authentically, consistently creative, your audience can't help but trust you because you've earned that trust. You become irresistible to your true fans, not because you try to be, but because of who you naturally are. So that's truly what irresistible marketing can be, in my opinion, should be. So uh, if you want to take this path of authentic uh, business authentic marketing. So I hope this is inspiring. And as always, I'm open to your comments, your questions below. And thank you as always for joining me.